Hello again, everybody, and welcome to our, I think it's our fifth, maybe only our fourth video. I've lost track of these things, but our final video in the uh, Systems of Linear Inequalities unit. Today, we're going to look at something called optimization. What is optimization? Systems of linear inequalities can be used in optimization problems. In optimization problems, a system of linear inequalities is used to determine a solution region, also called a feasible region. You can then determine the optimal or best solution for a situation based on the solution region and a special equation called an objective function, which is created based on the details of the situation. The optimal or best solution may be a maximum or a minimum value and depends on the situation. There are many problems in business, health, and the environment that require this type of thinking. So, optimization can be a tricky topic, but all we have to do in this course actually is we're just going to kind of have an intro to optimization. Um, you may go into it further into uh, in one of your other courses, maybe in a university or college course, but for right now it's kind of more just an introduction to this. Vertex theorem. The solution to an optimization problem will occur at a vertex of the solution region, or feasible, feasible region, as long as the problem has a defined solution region. So as long as it's a closed polygon. So I'm going to take a second and I'll just kind of let you know what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm joking there. Uh, so you're going to have these inequalities. Okay, so I'll draw one here. And let's say I had another one here and it goes this way. And let's say I have a third one and it goes down like this. Okay, so the solution or feasible region, it occurs where all the overlap is. So you can see here that I'll highlight these three vertices that this right here is where all the inequalities overlap. So this is the area where we would generate an answer for this situation because this is the area that's common to all the different um, uh, aspects of this situation. So those inequalities I was referring to, they would come from different characteristics or scenarios going on in the situation. Anyway, so we would generate this uh, feasible region, which is that purple area. And um, now, what I was talking about is this polygon. So what I've just drawn for you is a closed polygon. So a polygon is any kind of shape you think of, three sides or more, but it's closed, it's actually complete. What, can, what else can happen in these optimization problems is that you don't have a closed off area like that. So you might have something, I'll draw one like this. Okay, that inequality comes from something. Um, sorry, can't choose a color for some reason. Here's my other one. And then now you can see that um, if I only had, say, two there, um, I have one, I do have one vertex here, but all of this is my solution region, but there's no limit to it. So it's going to keep going in that direction. So if that occurs, your vertex theorem, um, you're not going to be able to find a maximum and a minimum. You'll be able to find one of them, and um, you might think there'd be no maximum because, you know, there's no kind of top end. But depending on the objective function with the negative signs and things like that that play a role in it, um, it's, we won't guarantee it's not a maximum. It might be there's no minimum because of the negative signs that are changing the signs in your calculation. So um, one more. So this would be our closed polygon. So a closed shape, I'll just call it. Okay. And this one would be, um, I guess I'll just call it open shape. So as long as the problem has a defined solution region, then um, our, our solution will occur at one of those vert vertices. If the problem does not have a defined solution region, it has an open side like in my second example, then the problem may not have a maximum or a minimum. All right, so it's not going to have one of those. It, it will have maybe one, but not the other. To determine the optimal or best solution, simply test each vertex of the solution region in the objective function. The point that creates the largest value is the maximum solution, and the point that creates the lowest value is the minimum solution. Not all optimization problems have both types of answers like we just discussed. All right, so we're going to look at an example. So like I said, truly this more of an introduction uh, is all we have to do to this. So you can see here what I have. All I have really highlighted is the solution region. So you can see here, and I, I still have purple select, I think. There is one, two, three four, five inequalities. So really, I would have um, a system with five different inequalities. 
Okay, that would be one system. And then we would graph all of those and we do all the appropriate shading. And then what I've highlighted in red here, this would be the overlapped area that's created. All right, so basically we've just sped this question up. Now it says determine the maximum minimum value of the objective function, Q equals 50X minus 35Y for the bounded feasible region shown. So objective function is that guy. That's the uh, overarching kind of idea or problem we're dealing with. Um, that'll come from the specifics of the scenario you are dealing with. Um, so for this question, you don't have to worry about where that came from. But in your assignment, I am going to give you a question where you, you try to kind of do this. It'll be a simpler question, but um, yeah, you'll try one of those. Okay, so vertex theorem. All it says is plug all these vertice coordinates into that objective function. See what gets generated. The largest value is the maximum. The smallest value is the minimum. So... Um, Let's get rolling with it, I guess. Q equals 50. I'm going to go with 5 and 16. So 5 minus 35 times 16. So when you're doing the vertex theorem testing, it's really just calculator work. So 250 uh, minus 35 times 16 is 560. That equals negative 310 when I put them together. So let's try another one. 50 times now 17. So I guess maybe I'll just check these off. So I've done that guy. So maybe it's slow, but it's not hard. We're just going to go through and check all these points. All right. So got to figure out what 50 times 17 is. I'll do this kind of live with you guys. I'm using my calculator. 850, 35 times 18, 630. And now I'll subtract those, 220. That's that guy. All right. Uh, fifth, whoa, wrong color. 50 times 20. Now, if you get this, what I'm doing, feel free to fast forward this part of the video. Uh, if you don't get it or you just really like what I'm doing, feel free to watch. Uh, 35 times 4, 140. Yep, that is 140. Just double check that. Uh, 1,000 minus 100 is 900. Minus 40 more would be 860, so I don't need a calculator for that. Okay, we got that guy done. We got two more. So bear with me. 50 times 8 minus 35 times 4. Okay, so that is 40 and another 0. Uh, 35 times 4. The way I multiply things, by the way, guys, is I break things up. I'm going to break my 35 into 30 and 5 and multiply them individually by 4. So 30 times 4 is 120. 5 times 4 is 20. And I add those two together, it adds up to 140. Subtracting, I do the same thing. I break things up. So I'll subtract 100, then I'll subtract 40. So 400 minus 100 is 300. 300 minus 40 would be 260. So you don't need to rely on your calculator all the time. Uh, 50 times 3. I know, though, it's a habit almost, because I even get into it some days where I just kind of go to my calculator for no good reason. I could figure it out. I just didn't think to do it or didn't feel like doing it. I don't know. And that would be minus 200. Okay, so I've got all my vertices plugged in. I've generated all these different values. So... Um, we're looking for max or minimum values. So my max value would be equal to, well, let's check it out. What's the biggest number you see? Looks like it's 860. So it would be 860. So I know my max value came from that point right there. And that ended up being my max. And then my minimum value. Okay, let's scan negative 310. Yeah, negative 310 looks like it's the smallest one. And that is 5 and 16, so that's that guy up there. But again, I actually just want the value of it, so negative 310. And then you do want to look back at uh, you know the vertices because that tells you things too. But there we go. Okay, so that's our maximum value. And as, soon, as long as you have a closed shape, it's that easy. Example 2. Determine the maximum and minimum value of the objective function. Q equals 10x plus 15y for the
for the unbounded feasible region. So bounded and unbounded, I guess I can go over that. Bounded just means closed off. Unbounded would mean open. Okay, so it's really an open shape. So you can see that, uh, yeah, at the top there, it just kind of keeps going. We don't have another uh, inequality to cut that off. Um, let's keep working. I guess let's get into it. Our objective function is right here. So like we said, we'll, we'll figure out one of them, the maximum or the min, but we won't know most, both of them because uh, that thing goes on forever. That We could, you know, I could pick kind of random points forever going up there, and uh, it, it'll keep kind of changing my interpretation, maybe what's happening there. So... 10 times 4 plus 15 times 11. So that'd be 40. This would be uh, 161. Uh, you should check out the uh, multiplication rule for 11s. It's a nice pattern, and I messed that up. It's 165. Um, yeah. Uh, the way it works is, I'll tell you real quick because it's just too neat to not tell you. Um, all you do, 15 times 11, I put the 1 and the 5 on the outside of my number, and then I add those up, and that adds up to 6. So anytime you multiply something by 11, you can do that. So um, there is limits because if the sum of the two numbers goes over 9, then you're stuck. So if I went, say, 27 times 11, then my answer is going to be a 2 here, a 7 here, and in the middle, 2 plus 7 is 9. So you can check that out. I, that's just kind of neat how that works out. Anyway, let's keep moving. Uh, 10 times 6 plus 15 times 5. So that's 60. This would be 50 and 25, which makes 75. Again, I'm adding it kind of funny there. I break things up. Uh, 60 and 70. Uh, that makes 130 plus 5, so 135. So I've done this guy, I've done that guy, my final one, 10 times 11, plus 15 times 5, 110 plus, uh, like I said before, 75, add those up, that's 185. Oh, I never finished this first one, hey, you're likely thinking that the whole time. Okay, there's 205. Okay, so based on this, um, like I said, I have a lowest number, but I can't really take into account that I have a, ma uh, a largest one. So my minimum value for this guy is going to be 135. Okay, but max value, I don't have one. Okay, and the reason why the max value would be contained somewhere up there, but it goes on forever. Now, these are kind of tricky actually when they're unbounded because you have to watch the signs. And if there's negatives in there, that kind of plays a trick with things. So um, just when you're working through it, I think you'll kind of figure that out as you're working through it. But you just kind of want to watch those. And you're not going to have a lot about a lot of these unbounded feasibility regions because, again, it's more of an intro um, in this curriculum. Uh, yeah, you can get into it, you know, in, in one of your different classes. You'll get into this in more detail, I'm sure. Okay, so that's all I got. Like I said, optimization, we're not doing too much with it, but that's all you need to know. Uh, to create the picture once again, it's really like in this one, there was one, two, three, four inequalities that combine to make the system, and then this would be the overlapped solution area. That's what that comes from. So if that made sense, that's great, and if it didn't, make sure you go talk to your teacher or come find me. Have a great night, everybody.